Hey, everybody. So how many of you out there want to know how they can convince their spouse, convince them to make a positive change that you would like to see? Hi, guys. We're Jeff and Maggie now, founders of Weblock Warriors, and we welcome you tonight to tonight's focus class. And it's a question we get asked a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I want my spouse to change so bad. How can I make them? How can I convince them? How can I see, make them see that they need to change? We, we get that in so many different ways, I guess, but it's the same question. How can I, fill in the blank, make my spouse change? And um, so tonight we're going to talk about that. So if you've never been here before, tonight is the O portion of the FOCUS acronym, the FOCUS class is the, the word FOCUS is an acronym that we use to describe the five steps you need to take right now to immediately change your marriage for the better, or five steps that are I don't know, necessary or you have to have if you want to actually change your marriage for the future. You can get that free report downloaded at our website on wedlockwarriors.com. It's a free resource for you if you're looking to positively change your marriage. It's the five steps we use to change our marriage and to save our marriage. And if we didn't have any one of the, one of our, those missing, if one of those uh, steps was missing, there would not be a Jeff and Maggie here at Wedlock Warriors to speak to you tonight. There wouldn't be. So we whittled down to the five most important core elements that you're going to need if you want to change your marriage or save your marriage. And um, without those, I don't know how you do it. And so we wrote that report. It's for you. It's for free. Go to our website. You can get it. But tonight, we're going to talk about how you can convince your spouse to make a change for the positive. And that happens to coincidentally or can conveniently fold itself well into tonight's discussion about opening the lines of communication. And I guess we want to kind of get into that right away here and just kind of start spitting on some ideas that out at you, how you can convince your spouse to make a change. And um, I don't know, do you want to start with the discussion or should I? I can go a little bit. Okay. I mean, a lot of times you've heard us say, well, you can't change anybody. You can't change them. And I, I mean, physically, that's true. But the more we talked about it, the more we realized you actually – you can certainly do a lot of heavy encouraging, um, <laughs> and, and you can do it. I don't know if it sounds like that. Yeah, I guess. Well, it's, well yeah. I mean, and, and it's not by saying over and over and over again you need to change. I mean, right. So I, that was one thing that we were we were really hashing out this week. You know, yeah. as we were going through our tough time, um, when we started to go the right direction, at no point did Jeff say to me. Hey, you know what? You need to change. You need to you need to do this stuff because had he said that to me, I would have walked the other way. It would have pushed me away so hard because to be real honest, he was not in a position to coach me yet. And I would not have been receptive to his coaching. Well, yeah, I mean, let's be honest. If you guys are here, I mean, the only reason you find us online is because you're having trouble in your marriage. If everything was peachy king, wouldn't you look for us? And so, you know, you're not in a position to help each other. You're in a position that you want to get out of, right? So you need help from outside sources, or you need help from somebody that's walked down that road. Really, that's what a lot of warriors is, is we've been down the road farther than you have, and we're just showing you the way to get down the road. Um, so, so yeah, so we get, that, we get that question a lot. And the only way that I can kind of describe how to convince your spouse to change, and then, so let me kind of describe how that works step by step and then why don't you kind of talk about the story about when you were saved and okay. how, how that kind of looked okay, okay? and so it, it, when, so tonight we're talking about communication or um, opening the lines to communication and in the report we talk about two ways of communication okay there's the active communication and there's passive communication okay so active communication would be hey you need to change okay and so that's not very effective, okay? <laughs> but the passive communication is what are you doing to change? And in Christ, Jesus really, really honed in on this concept in Matthew chapter 7 when he talks about taking the speck out of your eye or taking the log out of your eye so you can help your neighbor take the speck out of their eye. And he's like, hey, guys, first fix yourself. 
is basically what he's saying in Matthew chapter 7. I think it's the first chapter. It's the first little bit there in Matthew chapter 7. He talks about taking the log out of your own eye so you can then better help your neighbor. And what he's saying there, he's saying, hey, don't try to fix somebody else. Fix yourself first. And so the lesson here is, and, I, and um, everyone out there that's going to be like, okay, how do you change your spouse? You cannot, you, you out there in internet plan cannot change their, your spouse. Now, wanting them to change is totally different than expecting them to change because you're trying to tell them to do that. Um, you can want all you want. That's fine. And pray for them and, and whatever it is that you want to do. But expecting them to change because you are putting pressure on them, don't, don't expect anything to happen there. The only way you can change your spouse is for you to change first. You have to become the change that you want to see in your marriage. You have to become the change. So you have to take personal responsibility, even if it's not your fault. Even if things are crazy and you're like, hey, how did I get in this situation? Our situation was exactly like that. I, you know, and you can go read our story, but it's not like, you know, we looked around all summer. How did we get here, right? It wasn't, no one's pointing fingers at anybody. What I'm saying is you have to take responsibility for it, even if it's you don't feel like you did anything wrong, even if you think that maybe it's not your fault, this or that or the other thing, it doesn't matter. What matters is you want to save and preserve your marriage, and you want to make a positive change in your marriage. So you have to take personal responsibility for that. And the only thing you can take responsibility for is yourself. That's the only thing. And once you start down the road of change yourself, then then your spouse is going to start picking up on those signals. Now, I know you don't believe it right now. Mm -hmm. I didn't believe it. But it really goes back to f focusing on Christ first. Mm -hmm. And so that's why that's the first step in the FOCUS acronym. It's the first step because it bleeds into everything. Mm -hmm. Once I started focusing on Christ and I stopped focusing on Maggie, not that I don't love you. Of course. I love her to death. But... I don't focus on her. Mm -hmm. I focus on Christ and everything else falls into place. And so once I focus on Christ and I start focusing on him and started internalizing the changes I need to make to bring him glory, well then she she was able to feel feel that or feed it feed off that and start to make positive changes in her life. Mm -hmm. So here's an illustration of kind of how that'll look in your life if you start doing um if you start passively communicating change by positively changing yourself. So why don't you tell them a little bit about how you kind of got saved or maybe the differences and or whatever, you know? I actually, I'm going to back up to even kind before that, before that, just a little bit here. <laughs> because what he's talking about, <laughs> what he's talking about whenever he finally decided, you know what, I am going to take the focus off of her. Yeah. Because there's so many emotions flying. Whenever you're going through, especially if you're going through a betrayal or if you're going right. through through a, a point in your marriage where there's a lot of a lot of anger and frustration with each other. Right. Um, and it doesn't have to be, you know, infidelity that caused no. these separations. It could be a number of things. Right. But something has built up a lot of tension. And as long as that focus remains on each other, that tension gets higher and higher and right. higher because you're both expecting something from the other because if you're expecting change from your spouse you can bet they're probably expecting it from you as well no, you bet so it, it goes both directions and then there becomes this this tension that builds when it doesn't happen right you know it's so, expectation right. why is it you know right and so you get frustrated and you get irritated and you start thinking things like you know what i guess it's not meant to be you know what i would probably be better off if right. so you start thinking these these things that are wrong yeah you start asking you start asking the question how long is this going to take Right. We, well, get, we get that. We get that. Right. Like, right. Well, and that's, that's a legitimate question in your mind. And, and again, there's no answer. You know, there's no answer for that because right. we don't know how long you've been going the wrong way. We talked about that last week. Right. But with, with this, I can actually remember the point where I noticed, whoa, something changed in Jeff. Something changed because he and had you went found. went way back. Yeah, I did. Oh. I did. I know you're going that because far. Because he had found good. peace. Right. And I wanted that right? because all I had felt was this tension and this craziness between us. And he had decided that, that he was going to be okay either way. And I remember thinking, okay, there's something very different about him. I didn't know that he had got saved. I didn't know that he had found the Lord. I kind of thought I already knew the Lord. I didn't, but I had gone to church. I thought that was enough. And 
I can tell you it was years later. It was years later before I understood. And I could even tell you the moment whenever I found the Lord. And it was years later. Uh, we were actually in a pretty good place. Yeah, we were in a really good place. Yeah. And Jeff had seen a man speak about, there was a seminar called uh, Say the Word. Say, Is that what it was? Just Say the Word or Say just, the Word? Just, it was called Sam. Okay, here's the deal. I'll just plug him. <laughs> His name is Sam Igranazia. I know it. I, mean, I don't know. Sam, thank you for that book. It was awesome. It's called Just Say the Word. And it's a very small little book. I wish I should have thought about it. I would have brought out a copy for you guys to see. It's just, I mean, literally, okay. it's a teeny tiny book. And it just kind of outlines. Um, well, why don't you tell them what it is? Go ahead. You were on the Well, No, that's good. Um, what it is, basically, as a couple, you read one or two passages from the Bible together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you say what struck each one of you, like, okay, well, this stood out to me. And then your spouse says, this stood out to me. You pray about it, and then you put it away. There's no teaching. There's no, you know, hey, we're going to read the whole Bible in a month or whatever. It's not like, and, and we're not like, you're working on this, so we need to really right, work on right. this. Here. You better read this scripture. <laughs> it, it isn't even like that. It's it's randomly whoosh, open the Bible, read right. a couple verses, and, and then just, just see what speaks to you. And I remember um, I was mad at him. I didn't want to she do was it. So mad at me. And it was irrational. It, was it made no sense. And I, I was, I was throwing. <laughs> well, I'm, I really was. I was throwing a fit. Yes, well, I was throwing a tantrum. I'm glad you met. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's embarrassing to admit, but the reason was because I had tried to read the Bible before. Right. It didn't make sense to me. Right. I, I didn't understand it. I, I, I thought it was too old. I thought, you know, I, I had all these different excuses in my mind and. And I just flat out didn't want to do it. Right. And I remember walking in the other room, and I like, I was two-year-old tantrum style, while leaving the room. And I remember sitting down and thinking, I'm really mad at him because he wants to read the Bible with me. Like this doesn't even make sense. And he yeah. came in the room and looked at me, and and he had this puzzled look on his face, like, why is this a big deal? <laughs> and I remember at that point, though, I said, okay, okay. I'm going to try this. Mm -hmm. And when I opened it, it did make sense. It's like all of a sudden, all of a sudden it did make sense. That doesn't mean that everything <clears throat> made sense. That doesn't mean that everything was perfect, mm -hmm. but I had, I had let down that wall and I had finally surrendered mm -hmm. and things did start to work. And that communication was open even further. So mm -hmm. um, we're, we're kind of going. No, no, no. So what, what she just illustrated there guys, just so you know, and it's a personal story, but what she just told you, was exactly what I was saying before. Passive communication right. spurred a change in Maggie. Now, am I happy that change happened? You bet. Yeah, I wanted my wife to be saved and to start, you know, seeing the Lord and, and, and reading the Bible with me and stuff like that. Totally. That was awesome. But if I would have said, Maggie, you have to read the Bible with me. Maggie, you have to change. Maggie, we're going down those two different paths. Maggie, I'm seeking the Lord and you're not seeking the Lord. Maggie, check this out in the Bible. See, it says right here that you need to change. See, look right here. It says you're not saved unless you know Christ. You think she would have got saved? No, no. And in fact, in the same chapter, Matthew chapter 7, I'm going to read you a, a passage. And some of you are going to be like, that doesn't make any sense, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Okay, but hold on. <laughs> so, after Christ tells you this, this is what he says. First, take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. So you change first before you think you're going to help your brother change, right? Pretty easy. But then he goes on to say this. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor throw your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under your feet and turn around and attack you. Now, what does that mean? Now, am I calling... My lovely wife here is swine. No, I am not. But I am saying this. This is what Christ is saying. He's saying, listen, there's some people that aren't ready to receive what you've got. And if they're not able to understand it, if they're not able to see it for what it is, they are going to get angry, turn around, and trample on the truth that you just laid out before them. So stop throwing those ideas at them because they're not receiving them. Okay, so that's exactly what we're saying about mm -hmm. convincing your spouse to change. You can't. You're not going to. Not with you, words. No, not with words, but with action. Right. There. That's what you were trying to make the point of at the beginning, right? <laughs> well, it's. You it can is, with action, right? Well, that is that is what started this process for us. 
because, I wish we would have had these stats because yes. I can tell you that we didn't at any point say, you know, I think it's time to open the lines of communication. No, we did not. <laughs> it was purely by accident. It was. It was by accident. And well, and, well sense, that's for sure. we know now looking back, it wasn't by accident. It's mm -hmm. so that we could help by putting this together and show you so that you don't right. have to do what we did. Right. And it doesn't have to take as long as it did for us. Right. Now, I know some of you guys out there right now are just being like, you guys don't understand our situation. You guys don't get it. We're not even talking. There's no way. Listen, let's go read our story. You did not come from where we came from. I mean, they're hard. I mean, if we're going to stack up next to each other and say, yours is worse than mine, whatever. It doesn't really matter. What I'm saying is, we were really bad. We were really, really bad. And we got to a really good place. And this this was further along in our journey. And, you know, guys, here's the deal. You're going to say to yourself, how long is this going to take me? How? I don't know. And and I guess the question is this. And I'm going to answer that or just talk about that for just briefly for a second. I mean, if I could tell you five years from now, from, from today, from this moment, you got the report in your hands. You're starting to filter through that information you're starting to attend the class that we do live every wednesday here regularly maybe you reach out to us and get a private consultation maybe some things are going maybe you're grabbing onto different resources maggie's laying out there you're starting to read book all this stuff's happening and you're like thinking to yourself oh wow this journey looks very very far this looks really really hard mm -hmm. it is but what if i told you this five years from this date right now you and your husband are going to be, or you and your spouse, I should say, are going to be in a place that you wouldn't even imagine. Mm -hmm. It's going to be so good. It's so awesome. So fun. And I was just talking earlier to Maggie. I was like, how did we, this is awesome. I mean, this is, it's really that good, guys. It's worth the journey. Now, I know some of you are saying, I don't think it is right now. It's worth the journey. It's worth the journey. And if I could say that, if I could say in five years, you're going to have that kind of marriage, that marriage that just everybody just is like, wow, I wish I could be like that. Then is it worth it at that point? Of course it is. Of course it's worth it. And so that's what we're saying here, guys. To convince your spouse to change, let's just bring it all into focus here. To convince your spouse to change, you first have to be the change that you want to see in your marriage. There's no other way about it. And you have to start passively communicating that and what you do and how you perform and how you do go about your daily life. And you have to do it truly changing yourself and not say, what I don't want is I don't want to get an email a week from now and said, I tried it. It didn't work. <laughs> do you know? Do you yeah. Yeah. They got to give yourself a little right. bit of time, man. Well, and, and maybe, maybe it won't work. Maybe they don't change. Maybe they don't, but you know what? you will go on into the next part of your life so strong. You're going right. to go on so strong. Right. So I, we, we can't guarantee a marriage will be saved. I, we don't know. No. But what I do know is that ours wouldn't have been if he had not put his focus where it needed to be and, and fixed himself and moved on and went forward. I, I would have been continuing to push him away. Right. There's no doubt about right. that. For sure. You know, by God's grace, we are here. And that is why the first step is fixing your eye on God. Without him, there is none of this. The other steps don't really even matter. But open the lines of communication is step number two in the five steps um, that you need to take. And guys, I hope that this made sense to you. I totally understand. You know, we, we go off on a lot of heads. These are live classes we like them that way because i don't know that's kind of fun and you know we actually get a lot of questions sometimes and, and and we can engage with you uh in a in a more personal setting um but we understand if we go out on tangents might not make a lot of sense but hopefully it did anyways we love you guys and if you want to further dive in deeper visit our website wedlockwarriors.com where you can find our blog articles videos you might have missed from months and weeks ago you can also download the free report which you should right now go do or you can find out a way to reach out to us and get some one-on-one -on -one time with us to help specifically dive deeper into what your specific situation is until next time guys we love you we're wedlock warriors jeff and maggie now Real life. Real question. Real answers. We'll see you next week. Have a good one. Bye-bye.